Welcome to Red V TV, supported by Chapel House for the 2023 season. Now, with the season complete, we are in off-season mode and we are launching today a new series, which we hope uh, plenty of the fan base will want to get involved in and come on and share theirs with us. Kevin, we are going to do your favourite Saints team. Yes, looking forward to it. Now... It's important that we point out right at the start here, it is your favourite. It is not the best. It's it, That's it. it. It is. It's the people over the years, the players over the years, who I've really enjoyed watching. Some of them would probably come nowhere near a best 17, but or they, they wouldn't come near my best 17. Quite a few of them wouldn't. But it's my favourites. The ones that I've enjoyed watching, the ones that... I've kind of, I don't know, watched the career come through, all stuff like that. So, yeah, it is uh, it is not my best Saints 17. It's my favourite. Yeah. Hopefully, it will lead to a little bit of variety. It means you can have your Stu Howarths over your Sean Longs. Yeah, it does indeed, though. You can have your Travis Baines over your Johnny Lomax. Yeah. You can have your Paul Davidsons. Ah, oh, that's not be silly, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, that's it. It's it, it's about no one. None of these are wrong. They can't be wrong because they're your favourites, aren't they? So Absolutely. none of these, none of the choices that anybody makes, whether that's me today or people in the future, are wrong. They're the people that you enjoyed watching. So, without further ado, Kevin, this is your favourite Saint Helens team. And just to reiterate the rules, this is your favourite St. Helens players and head coach, not necessarily the best. It can only be players you've seen play during your time watching St. Helens play live. And it can't be past players you've only seen on film. So that rules out Malmeninga because obviously you're such a young boy. Uh, <laughs> and where possible, we would like you to show the players in the jersey you most remember them in. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah, why not? Okay, let's go with your fullback. So my fullback is Benny Barber. He is the most exciting signing in my time at Saints. I'd say he's definitely only one of a couple of players who has potentially come to us when they could have still been a world-class top star in the NRL. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it's the most ridiculously naturally talented attacker I think I've ever seen, especially at fullback. But the lift that he gave us when he when he signed for us was absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> Listen, he obviously made a bad choice going back to the NRL as quick as he did. Um and I think if he had his time again, he'd have stayed with us. But I just think he was explosive. He was quick. He was clever. Um, and he's, it was just a joy to watch him. I actually saw, um, I think it was earlier this year, when he played Castleford a couple of years ago. And on social media, I put it was an absolute joy to watch Ben Barber. Um, and, and that was, for the majority of his Saints career, the way, the just the fact that we got him up to fitness. And he was just, as I say, the most exciting player possibly that we've brought in from the NRL that I have seen. I seem to remember when the rumours first went round about him uh, potentially coming over. I think we were at the Magic Weekend at St. James Park, weren't we? Um, yeah. And the buzz that went round the stadium that day when the rumour emerged and then obviously him signing for us. He's one of the only players who... One when he got the ball in his hands, no matter where he was on the field, you almost almost thought we could score on every yes. play. Yeah, and you think back to the the Castleford game where he picked the ball up in his own half and just went, just absolutely went. He had that pick. He didn't always look like he had absolute extreme pace, but obviously he had enough to take him away from defenders. And I think him and especially Regan Grace seemed to get a lot out of that partnership. 
Um, and they were just so good for each other that, as I say, there's there's been some great players who've played at fullback. Um, but Ben is definitely the my favourite to have watched. Isn't it absolute madness when you rate, think that we never won a grand final with Ben Barber? Yeah. Yeah. And I think if it had stayed with us, um, obviously things change all the way that you don't then get Lachlan Coote. But he was that good. He, he, he could have won a grand final on his own. He really could. He could have just put in a man-of-the-match performance and absolutely bossed a grand final. As it was, his head did get turned, but for the time that he was playing for us, he was exceptional. OK. We'll go on to your first winger choice, Kev. Yes, Alan Hunt. Um, and the reason that he's in that shirt above all others is he was the first ever, the first ever number I had on the back of a shirt was on that shirt. And it was a number two for Alan Hunt. Obviously, I was a bit trimmer back then um, and probably looked more like a winger than I do now. Um, <laughs> but it, it, yeah, it, 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 it looks about 12 on that photo. He does, doesn't he? He really does. Um, but yeah, I suppose it's as you're a kid, you see the, the players who are scoring tries, you see the, the quick players and you, you kind of look at them maybe a little bit more on occasion, or certainly that's what, what I seem to do. Um, he was a player who could play all the way across the backs and he was prolific as well. Um, 29 in 29, 29 tries in 29 appearances in that 1994-95 season. Um, 14 in 23 in 1996 and then 27 in 28 in 1997 where I think he played mostly as a centre though but uh, yeah he was a favourite of mine as a kid um, as I say I got the number two on the back of the shirt um, good memories of, of Alan Hunt yeah he is someone who came up in the conversation when we were discussing uh, the best Super League wingers wasn't he and obviously his record, as you say, speaks for himself, but obviously we were basing it on Super League. And as you say, he played mainly at centre in 97. Um, just seeing him in that 94-95 kit, that's what, 28 years ago now? Um, obviously these days, um, Mr Hunt is doing some commentary work for BBC Radio Manchester. And I have to say, he does not look like he's aged today. No, he looks good, doesn't he? <laughs> he looks really good. Good on him. Like Benjamin Button. Yeah. <laughs> right then, Kevin. You're number three. My number three. Kevin Iroh. Now, again, I suppose this is a it was a big game player, Kevin Iroh. Uh, it, it sounds really unfair when he's uh, when he fancied it, he was on fire. Absolutely like unplayable. Um he gave us great memories in the nineteen ninety-nine grand final with his try. And the narcissistic bit of me loves him because of the song Who Put the Ball Over Bradford's Line? And it was Super Kevin Iro, but some of my mates sang Super Kevin Pender and that'll do for me. Do you know what? I absolutely hate Saints fans now because we sing Super Jack Wells with that song instead. It is forever Kevin Iro's song. And obviously this was in my early years of watching Saints. My only memory of Kevin Iro is scoring that try in that 8-6 victory over Bradford at Old Trafford. I was drunk at the age of 14 at the top of that North <laughs> Stand, drinking Iron Brew WKD, which I'll never, ever drink again since that day. Um, But yeah, that's my memory of Kevin Iro. And do you know what, Kev? On that photo, he looks really miserable to be in your team. He does, doesn't he? He's like, oh, why have you picked me? Um, but yeah, Isn't it mad that he's not even like, most known for being a Saints player. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, like he had a, obviously a good spell at Wigan. He had a spell at Leeds as well. Um, but as I say, he's a favourite, a little bit of uh, narcissism from me. But also, he, would, he was a good signing for us. I thought he was a good signing for us, a good solid centre who um, managed to get over and, uh, and win us our first grand final. I'm not a huge fan of that kit, by the way. No, but it's the one that I link him to because of that game. Funny enough, that kit, the player I most see in that kit is Paul Aitchison. Yeah, fair enough. Very random. Okay, then. Yeah. It's a player who I was surprised 
didn't get given your number three shirt, Kev, coming next. But he could play at, at left centre if needed to, couldn't he? He could play anywhere, Jamie Lyon. Um, now, those older than us, me especially, would have Malmeninga here, I think. To me, Jamie Lyon was our Malmeninga in a way. As in, a true Aussie superstar, the first true Aussie superstar you could argue that I saw play for us. And I'll nod to like David Furley's one season with us, but I think Jamie Lyon was a proper game changer. I don't think it needs too much to, to kind of sell what Jamie Lyon was about. Again, he came to us when he was, when he fell out of love with rugby league. So we got him fit and all of a sudden we just had one of the best players that has graced Super League who could play six, he could play centre. Um, and yeah, he's, he was just absolutely outstanding for us. Another ridiculously talented player. Yeah, the, the rumour has it, he was, what was he, pig farming? Back in Australia, yeah. he, he just gave up on the game, gone pig farming. And then all of a sudden, we go over there and, and nail the signing and get him over here. And I think that the fact that we kept him for more than a year as well. Um, yeah. I remember at that time, he seemed to he enjoyed the nightlife, as did most of the Saints team from that period. Uh, being in town on a Friday night after ripping it up at Nosley Road and then lording it on the tables upstairs in Nexus. Yes. And why not if you can? If you're putting in the performances that Jamie Lyon did and that the Saints were at during that period, then you could practically pretty much get away with it, couldn't you? Yeah. I, when you brought Ben Barber up earlier and, and talked about one of the only players who you felt when he got his hands on the ball could score for anywhere, I think Jamie Lyon is in the same bracket. Um, yeah. yeah. He was unreal. I, 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 and do you know what? Ben Barber looked like a speedster, an athlete. It's fair to say that Jamie Lyon didn't have that physique, but he was like lightning. Yeah. Deceptively quick. That's it. We got him from uh, Weewa, wasn't it? Was it Weewa Panthers? But somebody like Parramatta held his uh, registration. Um, but again, he's another player who, like Ben Barber, we got, not at his peak time because we had to get him fit, but could have still been doing a job in the NRL. As he proved by going back over to the NRL, captain in Manly, um, and becoming a legend over there for them. Yeah, he actually went back to Australia, won Dally M Centre of the Year 2010, 2011, 2013. Um, went on, carried on playing for Australia. Um, just and all round, he's an NRL legend, and he's just he's yeah. for me. I'd go far as saying he's a Saints legend as well, even though he only did two years. Was well, that, if that's Mal, a debatable Mal, one, no. If Mal Meninga is seen as a Saints legend, then why wouldn't Jamie Lyon be? Good point. Right, I know, I, know Mal, I know Mal Meninga came over and kind of raised us after we'd won not a lot in all that time, but. Jamie Lyon stayed that little bit longer and was absolute, as I say, for probably th those younger than the Malmeninga era, was the first genuine Aussie superstar we saw. OK, bonus points before we turn the page. Where did he score that try? Um, God, don't know. The Willows. Is that is it the Willows? Oh, it's the enough. Willows, because if you look in the top left corner, yeah, that is a Salford fan in a 2004 jersey sponsored by the Trafford Centre. Oh, fair enough. Good eyes. There you go. I hated that away end, by the way. You, it was it obviously the Willows, and you'd be on the away end, and the kids on the street outside would be lashing bottles over the yeah. wall at you. Grim. Yeah. Grim. Uh, fans these days don't know the born in these nice new stadiums. Right. <laughs> Your other winger, Kev. My other winger, Regan Grace. Um, I always wanted, when when they came into the club, I always wanted him and Calvin Wellington to do well. 
Uh, I don't know why, I just wanted to see them both kind of have a career at Saints. And obviously, Regan was the one who, who went on to do that. It's a great story of him coming up from South Wales to us. And he gave us that genuine pace. You think back to his debut at Wigan, when they'd obviously not seen him in a first-team jersey. We've not seen him in a first-team jersey. And he just kept on taking us off our line. Um, he, he's not built in the same way that Tommy Makinson is, as in he can run it in and gain metres after contact. But what he gave you was that genuine strike that, currently as we record this, we need in our team. Just that point of difference. And you think back to like the, the pandemic when he scored his hat-trick at Leeds, all things like that, proper, proper pace, proper wing play, an absolutely tremendous play. Yeah, very slight. Um, he offered us something different to, to Tommy Makinson, didn't he? He's almost in the mould of, of your Anthony Sullivan's and your Darren Alberts. Yes. Yeah. Just genuine pace, which you can't you can't manufacture that. So his genuine pace just gave us and that elusive ruling just gave us that that difference. And you think back to other things like the um the whole semi final where he, he got the intercept when we were pinned back on our own line and Hull just needed to go through the hands. Um, when you actually look at that intercept, it shows how quick he is, not over ground, but when he makes that decision to go for the intercept, it's kind of not even in the picture. And all of a sudden, bang, he's got the ball and he's gone and nobody's catching him. Instant acceleration, Kev. It's like having an electric car where you don't have to go through the gears. Yes. Or like me to a buffet. Um, obviously, he's had his injury issues the last couple of years. Obviously, he uh, snapped his Achilles in his final game for us. He had a re- reoccurrence of it. Um, it's good to keep up with his Instagram as he as he hopes to get back to full fitness. And hopefully, we'll see him gracing the turf once again soon, whether that's in Union or back in league. Um, but fingers crossed because, yeah, Regan Grace, special player. Yes, very. Okay, Kez. Kez? Kez? Kev? <laughs> You're number six. Yes, the magic man. Um, don't know why Russell Smith's waving to him though. Um, but th- this is this is going to be a weird one. I'll talk about the kit first. I could have put Tommy Martin in a whole range of shirts here and they would have been the right ones. So the Spider-Man kit, 97, that would have been the right one. The blue and white Saint Helens glass one, that would have been the right one. See, that's my that, that that would be my biggest memory of Tommy Martin when he scored that try against Wigan at the JJB, when yep. everyone thought he knocked on. He celebrated yep. it and went mad, saying he never. It went to the screen for about fifteen minutes, and the try yep. got given, and the North Stand went mental. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. But for some reason, I just think of this shirt with him more. Um, I know we'll get on to shirts later, but yeah, Tommy Martin was magic. Absolute magic. One of them off-the-cuff players who I'd love to see this day and age rather than it being all set plays or you're coached out to, to play a certain way. Tommy Martin probably wouldn't fit into how they play rugby league these days because he was so off the cuff, so dangerous in his kicking game. Uh, you, you, I mean, the one that we always think of, the, the Peter Shields try at Nosey Road against Wigan where he kicks it through, no look pass. Uh, I know that's that's the, the one that you always think of, but he was just a class player. And I don't think he'd, he'd pretty much like being in the number six year because he always wore 20 for us or... Three, if we were numbered one to uh, one to thirteen, I don't know if it was a bit of an unlucky number for him, but he'd still be my standoff. It's fair to say that Tommy was one of the last halfbacks who pretty much came from the the non-professional days, who was able to transfer it into the professional game. Yes, definitely, definitely, because he was he was always up there as one of your top performers. Um. You always knew that you had something there with Tommy. Um, so, yeah, completely agree with that. 
I, I love the fact how, as the older head, he almost seemed to be like Sean Long's best mate in that yes. combination. The, as, as the halves, they came as a a duo. Um, and it seemed to, for me, bring Sean Long along. Um, it could have been so much different, though, couldn't it, if he'd, if he'd have managed to have been, as I think it was Ellery Hanley, was it trying to force him out the club? Or was it, sorry, Ian Millwood? It was one of the two. I think it was Ellery uh, who was trying to force him out. Um, Tommy Matty stayed, Ellery went. Yes, um, Ian brought him back in, didn't he? Yes, so I, I think um, if we were, if if that had have happened and he'd have gone, this would have been a completely different conversation around a six and a seven. Yeah, and he wouldn't be in that jersey, right? Bonus yeah. point, Kevin. What game was that shirt in? Uh, that looks like a Challenge Cup final. Correct. Yeah. Did did he say play before it as well? And half of them wore our jersey, and half of them wore the Bradford one. Yes. 2001? 2001. Stadium? Oh, I want to say Murrayfield, but I don't think it is. Cardiff. Twickenham. Twickenham. Bloody hell. It was Twickenham. It was half built because the Saints fans were behind the sticks. Yes, in true. stand which didn't have a roof on. Yes. Um, and that was a try that Toby scored. By the, I think he was under the sticks at the Saints end, so that is him celebrating at that moment. There you go. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, we never won in Murrayfield. Let's not mention that. <laughs> you number seven. My favourite player at the moment, big smile on his face, the Johnny Lomax. Um, we all know he's my favourite. Don't we? Have you just picked him so that he unblocks you on Twitter? No. <laughs> no. Please, Johnny, if you see this, please unblock Kev. He's your biggest fan. <laughs> he didn't do anything. He doesn't know what he's done. It's... Um... <laughs> I don't know what I've done. You're right. And I've spoke to him a couple of times. And he's a really nice lad. So it irks me. Um, yeah, with, with Johnny, let's say I could have gone for Sean Long here as well. Um, I'm just putting Johnny in, in because he is one of my favourites. It's almost like Alan Hunt and another player will come to um, in the future who are just my favourite players, who I just, just love watching. There's no... I mean, they're good players, but it's just a... Yeah, they are one of my favourites. There doesn't have to be rhyme or reason to it. But last year, playing on with injury when we were struggling for half-backs, this year he's played on with broken ribs. Uh He's a tough nut, a true professional. And he's a, he's a damn good player as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's obviously had a couple of serious injuries during his career where he, he doesn't rely on pace no, nope. at all. Um, he's still got a little bit of speed when he needs it, but it's his rugby brain that guides him round the pitch. And Saints, obviously, we've heard um, Christian Wolf talk, we've heard Paul Wellens talk, we've heard um, Justin Holbrook talk just how much of a leader Johnny Lomax is and how basically they have to tell him to shut up sometimes because he's about 10 chess moves ahead. Yes. Yeah. Like an on-field coach. Um, but, again, I, I like the, the story of him coming in and he, I think he made his... De- did he make his debut or his starting debut at Wakefield away, possibly? Um, I wasn't at the game. I was watching it on telly. I'm sure he, he made his or he made one of his early appearances at Wakefield away. Um and I, I thought, oh, it's a big risk putting him in. But obviously he's gone from strength to strength, worn a couple of different jersey numbers in that time. Um and again, we talk about club legends. We'll go down as well. Yeah, he made his debut in two thousand and nine, Kevin, a forty two eighteen win against Wakefield. Yeah, thought so. There you go. And then following that, he played in a 66-6 victory over Gateshead and he played on the wing in that game in a man-of-the-match yeah. performance. There you go. All the best players start out on the wing. Yes. I started out on the wing, progressed to being a prop and then progressed to sitting on the bench. Talk, talking about rugby instead. Yeah. <laughs> Getting on to props. It's your first one. Yeah. Yes. The big scouser. Um. And I've picked, again, 
James Graham having a great career with Saints. But that, that shirt, everything about that season kind of built up with it being James Graham's last appearance in for Saints in his career. And to go out the way that he did was just absolutely superb. I think that shirt will become one of the classics over the years as, as time goes on. I think it will become more and more classic. Again, we'll get to shirts later on. But James Graham, a prop with hands, so didn't mind getting to the line and passing it inside. Would mix his game up, obviously, with strong running. And his return to the club has just cemented his place as, as one of my favourites. Remember the year we played at Witness and he thought he was a halfback? Yes. Yeah, he was joint captain, wasn't he? He was co-captain. That was the year before he went to uh, to Australia. And he just wants all the every time he ran the ball, and he was trying to offload and throw worldy passes. Um, yeah. yeah, obviously, he didn't win as much as he'd have liked in a Saints jersey. Um, after after two thousand six, we won two thousand eight, and then we had a couple of lean years, didn't we? Um, yeah. But it seemed fitting that he came back and got his hands on the trophy for one final time. Yeah, and there's some great video footage of him waiting for the Jack Wellsby decision to be given um, uh, and how he wouldn't allow himself to get carried away um, until it was. And it was just uh, so heartwarming seeing him and Tommy Makers in, in an embrace going, do you remember? And they're obviously on about the grand final defeats that they'd had, do you remember? And just having that joyous moment at the end of his career. Absolutely terrific. Is he the greatest Saints export of all time? Uh, arguably, in my lifetime, yeah, I'd say so. Um, whether whether it's ever, I'll defer to to people who who watched other players. Um, but in my lifetime, I think you could argue that. So, especially that how we went to the NRL, and he he was one of the best, if not the best for a period of time as a forward over there. Um, and I think it shows how well-respected he is over there that he's been able to make a career post-playing. Yes, yeah, in the media. I was, I was going to say that as well. I think that's how they've taken to him over there, that because he is so tough and has bought into everything over in Australia... I think that his move back over here for the end of his career was seen as a nice sign of respect by the Aussies. And as you say, because he appears on the media quite often over there, again, I think that they just like his style, like his no-nonsense talking, like the opinions he gives. Uh, shows he's got a good rugby knowledge. Again, sliding doors moments. If COVID doesn't happen, a player doesn't refuse to take a pay cut, potentially you don't get James Graham back. Yeah, exactly. I think he would have still been in this for me, but you're right. As I say, this cements his place in it, that he, he comes back, helps us out when we're when we're down a prop and does a great job doing so as well. Yeah. It's just a little bit sad that it couldn't finish in front of a full house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There we go. Right, Kev, it's time for your number nine. This is going to be probably the most debated position through this series. The question is, is it going to be Jake Byrne, Taylor Pemberton, or a another? Your number nine is? It's Kieran Cunningham. And he would be my captain as well uh, for this team. Um, an absolute legend. Absolute legend. Let's let's make no bones about it. This man should be celebrated as much as possible when people talk about the, the best in the business. I know we've spoken a lot about James Roby recently. Um, but he was... He kind of took the hooking game to another level. Um, 
And the reason I picked him as my favourite is probably because while I think James Roby has been brilliant over 20 years, there were more big moments that meant something that Kieran was involved in. You think back to the Warrington try when Jamie Lyon put the bomb up and we'd had all of them disallowed by the video ref and it was given in the last minute. You think of things like the Mark Smith tackle against Wigan uh, where he drags him down, Smith puts the ball on his thigh and then puts it like on the line, the touching goal line. I think it's crazy how we actually, again, deceptively quick, how we got back to make that tackle. Yes, yeah. I, every time I watch that back, and I've watched it today before we filmed just to just to see it again, I'm always surprised at where he, where he appears from and how he's the one who gets back there for him. Because considering that he was more, I don't know, the stature a little bit more of a prop rather than like James Roby, who's probably more athletically built. Um, yeah, listen, you you could put a um, a piece of paper in between the difference between James Roby and Kieran Cunningham, um, but as far as big moments go, I think I think that's that's why he's got the nod. I think it's important as well that. Because obviously he didn't have a great success in the coaching position. You need to separate the player from the coach. Um, yes. Because it saddens me a little bit how it ended. Um, because for me, he still is one of the biggest club legends that we've got. He's got obviously the statue outside. And no matter how brilliant James Roby is, it does not diminish from how good Kieran Cunningham was. Yes, yeah, exactly. Just because we've got one player who's finishing now who is rightly lauded shouldn't take any shine off what Kieran Cunningham did. We w- we've been blessed to watch arguably the two best hookers to play Super League in tandem, one without the other, then in tandem, then one on his own again at the end of his career. It's been an absolutely joyous, and you think back to when they were in tandem, Kieran had start, and James Roby had come on and give you a bit of impetus, and then Kieran Cunningham had come back on, and either Roby would go off or maybe go into thirteen like he did he has done over the past couple of years, but Cunningham would just give you that experience that James Roby's now learned from. So it's always almost the master and the teacher. Um, yeah, listen, you say he should. It should be separated. How he's um, he's coaching and he's playing. Completely agree with that. Every time people see Kieran Cunningham, they should remember what a club legend he is. Before we turn the page, why that kit? Uh, it's the it's the kit that he scored the uh, Castleford final try against Castleford and the final try against Huddersfield in. Um, just the one that, that kind of stuck in my mind straight away. Could have gone 96 Challenge Cup, could have gone Spider-Man, could have gone a whole host, but that's the one that kind of immediately clicked him. Yes, the kit that won us all money when we had him as last try scorer in the final ever league game at Nosley Road. Yes. Okay, next prop. Yeah, arguably not properly known as a prop for us, but Tony Pulitua. Um, he played prop a little bit more towards the end of his career with us, but signed as a second role. But I was struggling for props, um, so I'm using a little bit of artistic license, a bit like Johnny Lomax at seven. Um, in his first couple of years as well, he knew where the trial line was, didn't he? Great set of hands, offloading. He had his own easy to sing song of do 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 Tony Puller tour, which I remember coming out of Magic Weekend, surrounded by cast fans singing it, and it was like one of those great buzz moments. Um, and another thing that makes me kind of a him kind of a favourite is I think there were rumours of him going to Warrington, um, and that he was near enough signed a deal, and then Eamon was out on the pitch and said, "Yeah, we're going to offer." Tony Puller to and a longer deal, and he ended up signing again with us, um, which all always makes me smile. That kit is a very slimming kit. <laughs> it wouldn't be if I put it on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, why that kiss? Again, it's it's just the first one that I thought of. I I actually really like that kit as well. Um, I think that's it's reminiscent to one from the mid eighties. Um, but again, I think it's, it's relatively early in his career um, with us there. Um, I mean, he looks so young as well, doesn't he? Uh, but yeah, it's just just the one that immediately as soon as I thought of Tony Pulitzer, it was that one and the uh, the green one that stuck out. On that picture, Kev, you'd always look like he thinks he's a winger. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Probably just angling for, like, Francis Melly's job. Yeah. Right. You're number 11. Right, I like a player who can mix it. So I'm not going to say dirty, but likes getting stuck in. <laughs> that is Sonny Nickel. I just, I love the... Absolutely loved him. If heads needed cracking together, Sonny would be involved in it. Yeah, Sonny and Vila. Yes, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I just I loved him. Listen, he was he could play as well. He wouldn't have played for us if he couldn't play. Um, but yeah, I, I I think you need a little bit of of I don't want to say anger, a little bit of grit in your forward line. And I think I'm doing a disservice, him a disservice here. I just loved him because, excuse me, he would absolutely get involved in any sorting out of players that needed to happen. How many games would Sonny Nickel play in 2023? Three. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think he would. He would fit in with uh, with the okay. MRP. No, um, but. As I say, the lack of play, he was, I know he was chasing, um, was it Robbie Paul who ran through again in that 1999 grand final uh, without a boot? But he was the one who was catching up with him and caught up with him, but slid over the line because it was wet. And I know he was, as I say, I know he was bootless. Um, but yeah, I just, as I say, I just like Sonny, you kind of like an enforcer in your pack. So. There we go, and that kit is is around about the time that that work aside, I could get to more and more games. Um, so rather than say one of the early kits, like a, I don't know, early nineties one, before he he got traded over to Bradford, uh, that's the one that immediately stuck out that he'd be in that Saint Helens glass Y two K kit. Yeah, he's a he's a. An odd one in the fact that he obviously made 117 appearances first time round, moved to Bradford as part of the deal that took Paul Newlove to us, and then reappeared in 99 and did another 115 games for us. <laughs> Mad that, isn't it? That's it. Over, like, what's that? 200 and what? 232 appearances, was it? Something like that. Probably said. 115, good effort, Kevin. Yes. Um, good maths. Thanks. It's almost like I do that for a living. Um, yeah, it, and you don't you don't play for a club for that many appearances if you're not good enough as well. So he's another one I could have put at prop because I'm sure he, he played a couple of games at prop as well. It is one that I forgot. In September 2001, Sonny Nickel was suspended for six months for a tackle on Leeds Rhinos hooker Robbie Mears, which broke the Leeds player's jaw and it got reduced on appeal. To a nine match band. <laughs> well, from six months to nine matches. Well, yeah. I don't remember. No, there, there we go. Um, where did he, did he do it? I think he did it while he was on loan. Oh, no, we, oh, no, we sent him on loan to Barrow because their season started earlier than us. And then there's um, RFL confirmed he had to do it at Saints instead. <laughs> I didn't know Mike Rush was at the club in 2001. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, God loves a try. Eh? At, least, yes. at least we've always been creative in our disciplinary proceedings. Correct. So, yeah, the MRP wouldn't have him in 2023. It doesn't look like they had him 20 years ago either. <laughs> right, moving on. Yeah, Lee Gilmore, 
class player, and you mentioned about um, Kieran Cunningham winning us money as last try scorer uh, in that final uh, game, final league game. Lee Gilmore, I'd probably overstate it, has won me so much money as first try scorer over the years, or any time try scorer over the years. Um, it's untrue. But the lack of play as well. He's another one who, who went round a couple of clubs and then he just fitted us, didn't he? And I think as time's gone on, yeah, his his reputation's grown, but he was such a consistent performer for us. Um, around that time, we we on about the kits. I didn't really have one for it, so I've put him in one of that era that that kind of just fitted, and I thought, yep, yeah, that's that's a Lee Gilmore style shirt that'll do. Um, but he was. He could play a little bit of centre as well, um, mainly second row, but a great player, great player. He came through at Wigan, obviously made 108 appearances for them. Went to Bradford, did another 126 for them over a three-year period before he appeared in the Saints jersey in 2003. Um, there's not many players who come via Wigan after playing so many games and become so beloved to Saints fans. Yes. Yeah, correct. Um, but I think we, we'd forgiven him because he'd had that buffer of being at Bradford. Um, <laughs> possibly, don't know. But um, yeah, he, he he's another one who, who played an absolute shed load of games over, over his career. Um, but was always a consistent player. Always consistent. I know you don't remember the bad games, but I bet he didn't have too many for us. No. We always bring him up in conversation. And when we talk about Saints making mistakes in terms of letting players leave the club, we don't make many mistakes over the years. But when we discuss it, Lee Gilmore's name always comes up in conversation. The fact that we let him leave the club at the age of 31, and then he went on to make another 107 of Super League appearances. Yeah, and I think um, Eamon's actually said that as well, that he, he's the one that they made the mistake on. Um, and it's easy to see why, because we'd have got another couple of years out of him, wouldn't we? I think, was that the time period where essentially like the club's policy was anybody over the age of 30 didn't get more than 12 months? Yes, yeah. Yeah, so that that meant that he was going just based on that, and and I think that that didn't fit all, because imagine doing that kind of now. You, you'd be letting some of your best players go. We'd, um, we'd have half a squad. Yeah, and that's that's what we did. That's what we yeah. did with Gilman. Okay, moves forward. Super Hooper. Um, See Sonny Nickel as a player who can mix it as well as play. Um, a kicker's nightmare. <laughs> Lee Breer's nightmare, mainly. Because um, he seems to always go after him. Um, I think you could best describe his defence as attacking. But he could play again. He could play in the centres. He could play six, play 13, play second row. Um, and again, there's been better players at 13 than Jason Hooper. But as far as favourites go, and I like someone who'll mix it up. And that is exactly that type of... He's exactly that type of player. Yeah, my best memories of Jason Hooper is him just hitting the kicker 10 minutes later after every kick. So how many games would Jason Hooper play in this day? <laughs> None. <laughs> so... We've come to the conclusion, Kev, that you like players with a bit of speed and you like players you'll knock people out. Yes. <laughs> yes. Why that kit? It's the first one that springs into mind when it's him. I don't know why. I've, I've genuinely no idea why, but if you say black and yellow Komodo, it's him and Paul Sculthorpe always... Just pop it that pops into my head. Probably not the Paul Sculthorpe kit I go for, but the the two players that it just pops into my head that that's the kit that they wore. 
Yeah. Um, Jason Hooper, did we let him go too soon or was he was it injuries that meant we moved him on? He retired, didn't he? I think he was injuries, retired. wasn't he? That, that yeah. did for him in the end. Yeah, which was a shame. Um, it's a shame for him. Um, but we got him, that's it, we got him quite young. Um, 29, he retired, long-term shoulder injury. Yeah. So, and we got him, we got him quite young and we obviously saw the best of him. Um, as you say, he'd have to clean up his game in uh, in this day and age. But, yeah. Another good, solid player who just, as I say, there's better players who've played 13 for us. But, if we're going for favourites, yeah, just just like Tim Clobbery and kickers. It, it, it is mad. It, he made 79 appearances for St. George. Um, he was a junior kangaroo, comes over here at the age of 24. It's almost like yeah. unheard of now, isn't it? That that sort of thing happens. Yeah. But he came over here and he enjoyed his rugby, didn't he? Loved it over here. Um, that's it. I might not pick the best kick for him, though, but that's the one that just sticks into my mind. Okay, bonus points, Kev. Where was that photo taken? Who is it against and who is the player stood behind him? Is it Salford again? Yeah. At the Willows? Yeah. Is it, is it Alan Hunt? I think it's Alan Hunt. <laughs> Alan Hunt in his final season before retiring just wanted yeah. to get on the photo because he knew you were going to use it in your great, uh, your favourite team. <laughs> Good efforts. Notice we're using a Gilbert rugby ball as well. Can I just point out, Kev? What's that? The eight-panel rugby ball. Yes. Go on, what are you pointing out? Give me a moment. If I can find it, I'll tell you exactly when that photo was taken. Tell me the score in that game, Kevin. (laughs) <laughs> no idea. Uh, 32 10. 54 6. Close. It was the 16th of March 2003. The attendance was 5,717. Alan Hunt was the fullback for Salford, so it definitely is Alan Hunt. And it was in the Challenge Cup. Right, okay. Do you know how I know that? Because you've been on the Saints Heritage website? Well, I've just typed it in only because the Gilbert ball was the Challenge Cup ball. Because if you look at the sponsor on the ball, it says Power Gen. Power Gen, the spon- yeah. They were the sponsors of the Challenge Cup, which made me realise it was the Challenge Cup game. So I just say it's Salford St. Helens, 2003 Challenge Cup, and it brought me up with the answers. Excellent. This is why photographs are so good. Yes. Number 14, this is your sub bench, Kevin. This is my subs bench. Uh, yeah, Maury. Um, when he came off the bench, I think he lifted the crowd. He just looked like he was going to do one of them barnstorming runs every single time. Lovely fella, quiet demeanour. I used to work in JJB in the town centre. And one day when it had snowed, Maury came in, hoodie, shorts and flip-flops. So it might be quiet demeanour, but a absolutely. Coat. What? What, did he buy a coat? I don't think he bought anything. I think he just was out for a walk. <laughs> Absolutely. I remember someone coming upstairs and going, there's one of them seats, place it downstairs. He's wearing flip-flops. It was like, yeah, there he is. Maury Fasabalu walking around in flip-flops and it was snowing. Um, yeah, again, he, he's one of them people that you, you just sticks in your mind and you remember that he was someone who lifted the crowd and that's why he became a favourite of mine. Yeah, he, he came to us after playing for Samoa in the 2002 World Cup. Um, and I think we took a, we just took a flyer, didn't we, on... It was him and Don Fanati at the time. And I think they both came... I mean, my memory might be wrong on this, but they knew absolutely nothing about rugby league and they didn't speak great English at the time. And Possibly, yeah. they just integrated into the town. Integrated that much that Maori is now back in St. Helens living... I'm playing for West Park Rugby Union. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, if it's home, it's home. <laughs> Do you know what the, 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 that's just mad, 
Yeah. <laughs> Maori is living in St. Helens and works or plays at West Park. Um, I didn't quite realise that he'd made 164 appearances for Saints over um, a seven-year period. What, to be fair, that surprises me as well. Uh, Signed in 2003, was here till 2010. So good uh, longevity as well. Again, a reason why he's a favourite that he managed to get rack up a load of um, a load of appearances, and he was mainly off the bench as well. I don't think he had the same impact when he started, but coming off the bench, he, he kind of he knew his role. He knew his role was to to bring that energy. Um, and I think a prop like, I think we we always like that type of prop. So that's why I like Iggy Paz. He does it at the moment for us, and Louis's done it for us for the past couple of years. We've had it with Matty Lee's when Luke Thompson and Alex Walsh, who were our starting props, where you need that player to come in and kind of at least keep that tempo, if not lift it. And that's uh, that's exactly what Mori did. Yeah, other things that I was surprised when you look back. Um... He actually played for England and Great Britain as well. Yeah, he did. He played for us in the World, the World Cup. And the other thing about this photo, Kev, Kev, where was the photo taken? Oh, God, stop doing this. Challenge Cup final, yes. 97. 97? No, 2007, sorry. Is it? I thought it was 2006. I don't know. Ooh. And the other surprise on this photo, Kev, is that Jason Hooper is also lurking in the background. Yes. <laughs> you see, I planned it. All planned. <laughs> like the Matrix, is it, this, Kevin. Is it 2006, yeah? Um, I'll let you know in about two seconds. It's definitely the Challenge Cup final because they're celebrating on the, on the stage. Yes, it is the Challenge Cup final, 2006, against Huddersfield. Twickenham. Yes. There we go. John Wilkin played with his nose like this for most of the game because he broke it, didn't he? Yes, there he is. And there is John Wilkin lurking in the background also. <laughs> it's it's like I'm linking all this up. It is. It's not Jamie Lyon as well, is it? No, it's too late <laughs> for Jamie Lyon. But I'm pretty sure that's Paul Newlove top right, is he? No, it'd be too late for Paul no. Love. Who's that? I don't know. I'll have to... Uh... We'll, have to we'll have to dig the full photo out and have a nosy. Yes. I wonder if I've got it because you sent me it. Let's have a quick nosy. Yeah. Um... So I did crop the photo. It is 2006. That's actually James Graham. Is it? It wow. is. There we go. You'd have never got that with the hair cut, cut off. <laughs> Absolutely not. No way at all. Right. Next one, Kev. Next subs bench player or interchange. Sia Soliola. Um, again, he's another one who had his injury problems when he first came over. Um. I think he, he ended up with, there was one injury that kept him out a month, then he did an injury in training, and one was knee and one was ankle. can't remember which way around it was. And the fact that he could come back from those injuries, and it was signed as a centre and ended up moving into the second role, um, he was just absolutely tough as anything. And another one of them consistent performers, Absolutely huge for us in the go forward, the offloads, the classic Saints style. I hate that kit. Do you? There's kits from 2012, 2011, 2012 onwards for a couple of years, and they just haven't aged well. What about the away version of that with the black, with the red and the white? Mm, not a fan. Not a fan. No, fair enough. I don't mind that one. I don't mind that it's, one. It's the black. It's the black. I band. It looks like they got a rucksack on the back. <laughs> My stuff. It just doesn't go with the that, kit. What, what made fella, them put black piping on it? The fella behind him's trying to rob his lunch out of it. 
<laughs> okay, Kev, who's that against? I, that's against London. Um, I I think they put the black on because we need to be bolder in our kits because our kits can be boring sometimes and black's been like another colour that we could add to our kit. Yeah. Um, Sia, Sia was another top fella who, who really took to the town, didn't he? Um, obviously, he's gone to Canberra. He's, he, I believe he remains friends with quite a lot of, of people over here. Um, just an all round good bloke. Yes, definitely. Proper, proper nice fella. I saw him at a couple of the forums, um, and he was just really approachable. Seemed quite softly spoken. Another one like like Mori, who was a quiet fella and let let his demeanour off the pitch not be the same as on it. Okay, next interchange. Zeb Tyre. Um, I wish that we'd have had Zeb Tyre earlier in his career, if it had been possible. Um, we always mention Will Hoppo, RTB, and Rolls-Royce. This fellow was the forward equivalent of that Rolls-Royce. He had a great set of hands on him. And when we got him, we, um, Joe Greenwood had gone to Australia, hadn't he? And we got Zeb Tyre in as, as his replacement. Um. And at first it was like, he is the fittest player on this park. We're going to end up dragging him down to our level. I think was the joke we were saying at the back of the West. Um, he just looked to cut above. He was such a clever player, great link-up player with the half-backs and the, his centre and winger, could pass the ball, great set of hands for an offload. Um, and he's someone in the, in the mould of, I mentioned another player who isn't in me 17 of Willie Manu, who you almost think they were such a good player and they nearly passed me by of how good they were and how how much you needed that experience in your pack. Because I think Willie Manu is probably, we always speak about, or we did used to speak about Morgan Knowles being one of the most underrated players that we'd had. Willie Manu is probably one of those. But Zeb, he just... He just oozed class. Um, and that's not his real first name, is it? John. John, big John. Big John, we used to call him. Um, 107 appearances for Saints. Um, obviously retired at the end of uh, the 2020 season. Another player who retired at the end of COVID or during yeah. COVID. Um, but obviously was in that 2020 grand final um, where Wellesby scored the winner. Um, we spoke about him. Was it was it Anfield Magic the year before? There's definitely an episode of Red V when we did it. The re reaction outside Goodison after Magic in Anfield because I wouldn't film outside that dump. Uh, and we and I'm sure we oozed about Zeb Tyre and about him wanting to go round again. We oozed about him. Oozed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure who's the one I'd use there, but yeah, we, 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 we yeah, it it was class, wasn't it? Um, I think he's he's one of those players who kind of, as I say, I just wish you would have had him earlier, um, because I think those kind of lean years that we that we had just before he he turned up would have been a little bit more pleasing on the eye if he'd have been uh, passing the ball out from second row. Yeah, it was Magic 2019 where we beat Castleford 36-16. Uh, if you go back into the archives, you can watch that video. You can watch it. Weird things just, I'm sure uh, how weird things just come back to you. Yeah. Right. Your final interchange, Kev. Is it going to be Paul Sculthorpe? No. It's going to be my first ever favourite player, Phil Vivas. Um, I, again, when I I first I watched my first game on the fourteenth of March, nineteen ninety. Um, it was a rearranged game against Warrington that we lost. Um, and my granddad took me to the game. Um, and I don't remember loads and loads about it. I remember it obviously being dark and the floodlights being on and the players just seeming so far away from me. Um, 
And the other thought was, why are they playing this young lad, Gary Conley, at fullback and not Phil Vivas when he's the fullback? And that, that were my take, main takeaways from that. But I think it was just because, even despite him wearing a centre's jersey there, when I was younger, I always fancied myself as, as a possible fullback, mainly because I could catch. Um, and I just had a, a kind of a loving for whoever was wearing that shirt at the time, and that was Phil Vivas. But he's a man who's played everywhere apart from prop for Saints. Yeah, absolute classic kit. Um, I'm assuming that's about 1990, where Vivas would have been about 26 on that photo. The players just aged worse in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, I, think so. I think so. I'm just putting that I picked a photo with him um, without a tash, sorry. It looks, it looks brilliant with a tash, proper Aussie tash about him. Um, so yeah, it's as I say, first ever favorite player. Couldn't not have my first ever favorite player in this 70. 381 appearances in a Saints jersey. I love the fact that on the rugby ball as well, it's like classic marker pen Saint Helens RLFC on it, just in yes. case somebody steals it. Yeah, so when he gets kicked over the uh. The yeah, Eddie end or the, the scoreboard end when somebody uh, kicks a conversion that they know it's theirs and not somebody else's. Brilliant. Right, Kev, there's only a couple of things left to do. Who's your head yep. coach? My head coach is Justin Holbrook. Now, we've had so many great head coaches over the years and I nearly went with Ian Millwood for this. Because I think he built on Ellery Hanley's defensive uh, solidity and gave us that attacking flow. But all round, I think Justin Holbrook just got it. He got the town, he got the club, he got the, the idea that there needed to be a link in between the club and the fans, the community and everything like that. And he put it into place. And he brought the good times back. He he brought, and it's it, it's obviously unfair on Kieran because Justin Holbrook managed to be able to pull Ben Barber out as a signing that Kieran Cunningham couldn't. But he just almost gave us that when we were in the, the doldrums of of not necessarily playing very aesthetically pleasing rugby. Holbrook changed that. Um, and I think he just got it all round. He was a nice fella. We've we interviewed him, and he was absolutely tremendous. Um, great giving up his time for stuff like that. He just got it. Um, and I could have mentioned Daniel Anderson here. Could mention Sean McRae, uh, Ian Millwood, as I say. Could mention Christian Wolf, who's one of the most successful coaches in Saints time. There's quite a few you could mention. But I just think Holbrook got it. Right. Right. Your kits, Kevin. That yes. squad, what kit are you putting them in? Well, it'd have to be an updated version of this. But we're back to that early 90s kit. Just look at it. Just look at it. That's the first kit I remember Saints playing in. It's got a massive red V on it. It's got a classic badge. It's got a classic sponsor. And the coup de gras, it's got the numbers on the sleeves. Yes. I like the fact that even on them two kits on the page, you can see one, see which one has been through the washer more. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can. Um, but, it, yeah, it's everything about that shirt is brilliant. Everything about it. I don't get why we don't make updated, like new home kits for like say 2024, 20, 2025 and just completely model them on a retro kit with an updated yeah. version. It's something exactly. that we don't do as a club and it would sell massively. Just put the put home bargains across that and put the badge on and put O'Neill's where the Umbro is and sell it. Exactly. You look at some of the, some of the shirts that I might have put out today, especially the, the older players, just aim them, aim them at that. Like the, the Komodo one that um, Jason Hooper's in might not be the greatest. But if you model it something on that 
then all of a sudden you've got something completely different for fans to buy. Or the pinball bold. kit. The pinball kit. Is it a V? It's kind of because it's all coming down here. Be braver with the kit choices. Yes. Right. There's your home kit. But on the road, Kevin, what are we wearing? We are wearing another classic 90s effort. That is the first shirt I ever owned. Didn't get a number on the back of that one. But that's the first replica jersey I ever owned. Um, I love the blue and white kits. Uh, so I, I do like the the alternative version of the home shirt that we've just had. The, the kit that Alan Hunt was in, again, great memories for me. But I do like the blue and white kits. Speak about the James Graham shirts that from the 2020 Grand Final. That's another favourite of mine. This, I'm so I bet people are surprised that it's not the heritage kit because I do love the sky and chocolate kits. Um, the pinball kit nearly got picked here as well because I do like that one as well, just because it's different, even though it's in very traditional Saints colors of a black away shirt with red and white on it. But this one just holds so many good memories, so we just can't play anybody in white if we're going to play um Kev's favorite team. You know what I love about like, when you look at these old photos? Like, look at the shin pads. Yeah. Magnificent, <laughs> proper shin pads that go up your, uh, go up to just below your knee. And you used to put them on the, the, the ankle guards and everything on them used to go yes. under your foot. Yeah. None of, these, none of this piece of cardboard rubbish. Proper shin pads. Proper, a proper shin pad. It's proper shin pads. It's shorts that literally one cough and the... the Family jewels might be out. Um, it's it's long sleeve jerseys. I feel like we're on manager from is it the fast show? Marvelous, isn't it? That is your team, Kevin. That is your coach, and there is you looking resplendent in the top corner. Yes, happy days. I think happy I think that. Team. Yeah, I think that team would give quite a few, uh, quite a few teams a run for the money. As I say, it's not the best team I've ever seen. I'm sure we, we may well come on to doing a series of that, but that's uh you've got you've got pace and you've got potency in the backs, you've got angry forwards, and you've got a bench that can cover all seasons. So yeah, happy days. Okay. Right, Kev, thank you very much for sharing your favourite Saints team. It is the first in a series. I'll Get mine done next, and then we'll we'll open it up. Um, we want contributions. Anybody who wants to get involved, please do so. We'll we'll flesh this series out. It will be a long running series, and um, that we can pop out occasionally. Excellent. Right, done and dusted. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll catch you next time for another episode of Red V TV. Catch you soon. <laughs>